I'm Kath, welcome to my channel Made by Kath Craft. Thank you so much for watching my vlog today. Um, so you may have visited my channel before and if you have you know I love to talk about all things sewing related, particularly dressmaking, sewing patterns, fabrics and I do like to talk a little bit about knitting every now and then too. Um, but this vlog is all about what I've been wearing this last week, what's in my handmade wardrobe. And I've been filming a series of vlogs this May, each week sharing what I've been wearing for that week as part of Me Made May on Instagram. And it's a hashtag that was set up by Zoe of So So Blog. Um, you probably already know this if you watched my previous two weeks of my Me Made May handmade wardrobe, but it's a yearly thing on Instagram. Every year people get together, sewists get together on Instagram to celebrate Me Made May. And it's a way of celebrating our handmade wardrobes um, and people are generally encouraged to make a pledge, but it's quite relaxed. So you can choose whatever you want. It can be something really small, like finishing one project you've had left for ages, or um, a lot of people pledge to wear one item of Me Made clothing a day. So I decided this year, as last year as well, to make, wear an item of Me Made clothing every day in the month of May. But I also decided each week to try and choose a different pattern company every day in the week, just to encourage me to choose different things in my wardrobe, and I found it a great challenge so far. And actually this May has been quite different from last year. I've been choosing totally different garments because the weather has been really dire here in the south of England. We had a couple of weeks of really cold weather, this week it's been a little bit warmer, but it's been so rainy and it's been really weird rain as well, where one minute it's absolutely bucketing it down. The next minute it's beautiful sunshine and then it'll rain again just when you're thinking, hooray, I can go outside. So it's been a bit of a funny week, slightly milder, but actually um, still needs to wrap up a little bit for those colder moments. But anyway, let me get started on sharing with you what I've been wearing this week. So I usually start my vlog sharing what I'm wearing um, today. But this is my Friday outfit for this week, I'm filming on Friday. Um, so actually I'll start back now Saturday and I'll get to this outfit at the end of the vlog. And last Saturday, it was still, we were still in the really cold snap here and it was really actually wintry cold even. So I chose to wear one of my snuggliest um, cosy winter um, dresses, which is this one here. It is the Southbank sweater dress by Nina Lee London. And um, it's a lovely pattern. I shared a cropped version, a jumper version earlier in the month. But um, for this Saturday, because I was super cold, I thought I'd get my cosy sweater dress version out, which is this one here. And it's a lovely, it's a quite a fitted, it's made out of jersey fabric and it's quite a fitted shape to it. And it's got slightly dropped shoulders, um, cuffs and a bottom band and then a stand-up collar. And it's a great one if you're fairly new to sewing with stretchy fabrics, because you don't need to worry about getting the collar to lie flat, it's a stand-up collar. And you don't need to hem the, the, the um, outfit either, because it's got cuffs and a hem band. So it comes together quite quickly. And you can also add pockets if you want, um, which is always good, I think. Um, and the size range is really good on the Nina Lee um, pattern too. There are two size ranges available for the South Bank. One is size um, 6 to 20 and the other one size 16 to 28. So that's great. They've got a quite an inclusive size range there because it's a lovely snuggly one. And a great, um, great one, yeah, just to keep you cosy. <laughs> but I'll show you my version. And it's here. This is my version and I made it in this lovely um, chevron quilted fabric and it's my, a Mind the Maker fabric. See, it's got this lovely chevron quilt on and it's really soft and cosy. Um, it's, um, I made mine the red colourway but they've got a whole variety of lovely colours of this. And it's made out of 85% cotton and then inside it's quilted and the quilting um, content inside is um, recycled polyester. So there's 15% recycled polyester. So it's quite nice, it's got that environmentally friendly element too. And it sewed up really nicely and it's super snuggly. And um, I made an extra long version because I wanted it to be a little bit oversized and really cosy. So I kind of sort of wear it over a t-shirt and it wouldn't be too tight and yeah, nice and cosy and long. And I've got pockets. And I made the size eight for this. Um, and then I, um, I um, narrowed size six on the arms just to make sure the sleeves weren't too baggy. But the size eight is quite a nice size on me. It's not too fitted yet. Yeah, it's nice and comfy and loose. And I'll put a picture up so you can see how it looks. So I've got pockets on my version and I did lengthen this as I mentioned I think I lengthened it around the bodice and I didn't move the pockets up so I think in hindsight or if I made another one I would move the pockets up slightly because they are quite low but they still fulfill their purpose of holding um things it's just maybe a little bit low for my hands to go in them but um I do like the pockets on this dress too so I'm glad I did add them yeah it's really cozy and snuggly and um I got this fabric from Lamazi Fabrics and I had to look on their website because I got this a while ago I made this one a while ago I had a look on the website and I think they've got a couple of colourways still available, but not the full um, range. But I'll put their website down below in case you have a look and want to have a look. 
but Minerva also seem to have the full range of colours, so if you want to have a browse of the full range, I'll include a link to the fabric on Minerva's website too, just so you can check it out. But that was day, um, day one this week. Saturday, it was a nice snuggly cosy day in my Nina Lee Southbank sweater dress. Yeah, it's a really nice um, sewing pattern, it whips up really quickly and it's really cosy and I think it looks really nice too. And one more thing I wanted to mention actually about the Southbank sweater dress is it's great because it doesn't use up too much fabric either. So I think my size, um, if you have 150 centimetre wide fabric, you only need 1.6 metres of fabric, which I think is not too much for a kind of a cosy, snuggly dress. I guess because it's not got a gathered skirt or anything, the, the, the body pieces don't take up too much volume. But it's great that it's not too fabric hungry either. For day two of this week, so that was Sunday, I decided to wear a Megan Nielsen pattern. And it's funny actually, because I've noticed in May there are a couple of pattern companies I really reach for a lot, and Megan Nielsen is one of those. Um, I find the clothes that she designs really wearable and I feel they feel quite me. So they are ones I kind of tend to kind of go for a lot. And um, for this um, Sunday, I wore this pattern here, which is the Darling Ranges dress. And um, yeah, it's one of my favourite patterns by her. And it's a bit of a classic. It's a lovely shirt dress. Um, it's got a V-neck sort of bodice. It's fairly fitted. It's got waist um, darts here at the waist. Um, it's got uh, sort of sleeves that fall just below your elbow that are um, sort of finished with elastic. So it's quite a nice finish, I think. It's got waist ties to bring in the shape. It's got buttons all down the bodice, a gathered skirt and pockets. And that's this version here, if you can see the line drawings. There's also a shirt version, which is quite nice actually, and not one I've ever thought about making. And then this sort of slightly more looser sort of shift style um, shape shirt dress, which I'm not sure is quite so much me. Um, and I haven't seen so many versions of this made actually, so I might go and have a little peek and see what they look like, because sometimes I think you're not sure on the line drawings, but when you see a few that people have made, it can really change your mind on it. But this is a Darling Ranges dress. Um, it's a nice one to sew up. Um, and um, yeah, I'll show you my version I wore. This is my first version I made. I've made two versions of the Darling Ranges. I've made this one and another one in plain chambray. But this is a um, chambray with a print on, which I think is really lovely. It's an art gallery chambray with this lovely floral print in sort of pastel colours. And then I also had a bit of fun with the buttons and chose some sort of pink pastel flower buttons to go with it. And so yeah, it's got, I've got the buttons all down, I've got the elasticated cuffs, I've got the um, little ties at the back and they're interesting rather than um, being secured by the side seams you kind of sew them on with a little cross so it's quite a nice little detail I think. So yeah that's my version I'll put a picture up of me wearing it and it's quite a nice day dress I think but it's quite nice and fitted which I quite like. So in terms of sizing on this one I've got the old style of pattern um, which, which um, has um, the sizes from extra small to extra large and they're the only five size bands. But looking online, it looks like um, there's now a wider size range available with more sizes. So I believe the size range now goes from size 0 to 20. And then there's also a curved size range, which goes from 14 to 30. So that's great that the, the dialing range is available in such a large size range. But my version, um, I decided to make the extra small, which was for measurements of bust 34, waist 26 and hips 36. And that's my waist and hips, my bust is slightly smaller. And I think the new size range from Megan Nielsen does have a smaller size, which does have a smaller bust size built in, which is great. Um, but I haven't found this pattern to come up too large around the bust. But I did actually make a toile of the bodice of this one before I made my first version. I'm glad I did because I had to make a couple of other adjustments. In particular, I found it was um, sort of tugging a little bit across here. So I made a slightly broad shoulder adjustment, which is not one I usually um, end up making. But it made a big difference on this dress. And I'll put a picture up so you can see how it looks. So I'm really glad I made a toile of this bodice just to make sure I could get the fit right. I think I'd heard of a couple of people maybe having a little bit of a gaping as well here. So I wanted to make sure I got it all ironed out before I cut into that lovely art gallery chambray, which was quite expensive. But I'm really pleased with how it turned out and I really enjoy wearing that dress. And the chambray, um, I got the art gallery chambray, that came from Minerva, so I'll include a link down below. Art gallery do some really beautiful quality chambrays with really lovely prints on them. And I really like wearing that one. But it's just, this pattern is just a really great day dress, um, really comfy to wear. I've seen some beautiful versions in other fabrics too, um, like cottons and viscoses. So I think it is quite versatile in what you could use to make it. And it, again, it's not too fabric hungry. Um, for my size, the extra small, if you have um, 150 centimetre wide fabric, you need 1.9 metres, so under two metres of fabric, which I don't think is too bad for a dress um, with um, sleeves and pockets and everything. But that's the, my day two outfit, the Megan Nielsen Darling Rangers dress, a great day dress and um, yeah, pattern brand that I really rate. So day three this week was Monday and it was a really, really rainy day and I think I spent most of the day at home. 
and I wanted a comfy outfit that I could wear in the house but also would feel nice. And I actually wore another item by Megan Nielsen, a skirt by Megan Nielsen, but I teamed it with a top by a different pattern company. So I think that's okay for my different pattern company everyday um, pledge. So I wore um, the um, Agnes top by Tilly and the Buttons, this pattern here. It's a great jersey top pattern. Um, it comes in a few different variations, but I just made this plain version here. It's got a lovely scoop neck. Um, it's a fitted top, so it's got quite a lot of negative ease built into the jersey fabric, so it is quite fitted. It's got a couple of other cute versions as well. You can put some ruching um, here on the front or on the, on the arms as well if you want to. But yeah, I just made this plain version here. And I teamed it with this pattern here, which is the Megan Nielsen Brumby skirt. This is, I think, my possibly my favourite skirt I have in my wardrobe and one I wear a lot. So I, it's going to come out at some point in Me Made Me. And I'll put up my outfit so you can see what it all looked like together and then I'll talk you through the items a little bit. So yeah, um, the top, um, the Agnes top, I made in this lovely um, blue jersey. And this is a quite a recent make, actually. If you've seen one of my recent makes vlogs, you'll have seen this one already. Um, yeah, it's just a lovely blue jersey with these cute white flowers on, this sort of ditzy floral print. And it's a craft cotton jersey, and it's really nice quality. It was really soft and cosy to wear. And um, I got this from Stitches and Bobbins, who's an online website, but I think they might have closed. So I don't think I'll be able to link them down below, but I'll double check in case I can. But um, if you're interested, um, you might be able to google craft cotton company jerseys to find some they are really nice quality so that's my agnes top and i made that in a size two which is my standard tilly size and i think that's just me on the bust and waist yeah the size is the size two is 32 bust 26 waist 35 hips but i find with that top it's stretchy enough that the hip measurement being slightly smaller than my measurement doesn't really matter too much so that's why i wore on my on my top and then i wore it with my brumby skirt which you can see and it's a lovely um, denim skirt um, I'll show you it here. So this is my Brumby skirt here. Oh, there's the back. Here's the front. Um, so it's quite a short denim skirt and I made it in this um, really quite substantial um, denim fabric. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's called a bark weave denim. I got it from Material Girl Laura a long time ago and she's closed since unfortunately, but it's definitely quite a sturdy denim, which I think suits this skirt quite well. It's got these really enormous pockets. Um, it's got some nice um, top stitching details around the hem and the pockets. And then it's got an exposed zip on the back, which I quite like too, um, which I think I've yeah, done the top stitching around the edge of there. And I really like the look of that too. It was quite an early skirt I made, so it was a bit of a baptism of fire doing the exposed zip. But I do find that Megan Nielsen patterns um, are really, they, um, they explain all the steps really clearly. So it's a great one to take you through something like adding in an exposed zip. And um, yeah, it's just a really great skirt. There are a few different options. I think it's one of those skirts you can get loads of different um, options out of, depending what you want to make. There's this version here, which I've kind of made very similar to the pattern, uh, which is kind of a structured kind of mini skirt. But there's also kind of a more basic gathered skirt version and then a, a, a skirt with pockets. And you can make one of these in a more of a swishy sort of floaty fabric. And I think that would be really nice too. Yeah, that's a Brumby skirt. So um, I've got the pattern, paper pattern, which is available in sizes 0 to 20. But again, with Megan Nielsen, she's got the curve range. So there's also a Brumby skirt available in sizes 14 to 32. So that's great. Um, and it's very true to size, this one. The skirt's definitely designed to be fitted around your natural waist. So I think I made a size... I can't remember whether I made it for size six, four or six, um, which is either waist 26 or 27 inches, but um, it definitely fits really well around the waist, so you wouldn't want to kind of, um, yeah, you would definitely want to go with your waist size on this one because it is very fitted. But that's my version. I used a bit of um, leftover fabric for um, um, the facing, which I've made a pair of pyjamas in, so it was quite nice to be able to use that. This is one of my early makes, so I made it pre-overlock when I zigzagged um, all the um, edges instead um, on my sewing machine. So it's actually a little bit scruffy on the inside now, um, but luckily it's still going strong because I do love this one. So that's why I wore my Agnes top um, on day three. I'll put up a picture again so you can see the full outfit. The Agnes top by Tilly and the Buttons and my beloved um, Brumby skirt by Megan Nielsen. Oh, and one little detail I thought I'd mention, because it's not always that obvious um, from seeing the pattern piece that I really like about this skirt as well, is they describe it as having a contoured web, um, waistband. So it um, kind of goes in at the top a little bit. So I really find it um, hugs your figure really nicely. Um, I've got a couple of other skirts where the waistband is much more... Um, less contoured and just straight, um, a sort of straight band. And it doesn't sit as well. I think it kind of sort of can sort of tuck out a little bit at the back. But this one sits really nicely because it is contoured. Um, so yeah, it just, it just kind of hugs your body really well with a slight um, kind of slope to kind of account for your sort of natural kind of sloping at the back. But that, yeah, so I mentioned that as well because I thought it was quite a good feature. But yeah, that's my day three outfit. 
So for day four this Tuesday, I decided to pull a t-shirt out of my drawer that I don't wear a lot, but I always enjoy wearing when I do wear it, so I should reach for it more. And it's actually a t-shirt made using a free pattern. And it's this pattern here, the Kirsten Kimono Tee by Maria Denmark Patterns. And um, yeah, I came across this when I was looking for um, free t-shirt patterns because I wanted to add a couple more t-shirts to my wardrobe. And this is a really great one because it's a great stash buster too, because you, sorry, scrap buster, because you really don't need too much fabric um, for this one. But yeah, it's, um, it's quite a straightforward, simple design. There are main, two main pieces of fabric, a front and a back. And um, it's got, as you can see, kind of um, grown on little cap sleeves. And then you just need an extra little scrap of fabric for the neckband. Yeah, it's great that it's a free pattern and it whips up really quickly and it even gives you two different options for finishing the neckline. You can sort of make a kind of classic sort of jersey t-shirt neck band or you can um, use binding. So that's quite nice. There are a couple of different options for finish there. And this is the version um, I made which um, I made in leftover fabric actually, because it is such a good um, scrap buster. And I made originally in this fabric, it's a cotton jersey fabric from Stoff and Steel. And it's lovely, um, yeah, it's red with these lovely tulips on. And I originally made a Freya dress by Teeling the Buttons in this fabric. And I found out I had quite a lot left um, still. So I was really pleased to be able to use it for a t-shirt. And I think I wear this t-shirt more than the actual Freya dress actually. Um, but I use the neckband method of finishing the neckline for this one. So you can see the little neckband there. And it's got the cap sleeves. And um, yeah, it's just quite a nice basic little t-shirt. Um, one thing to mention about this pattern is the seam allowances aren't included. So I made two versions and my first version, um, I, didn't, I didn't really notice that, even though it's written in really big bold letters on the pattern, I somehow didn't notice. I was so used to patterns with seam allowances, I didn't even think about it, um, which came up a little bit more snug. So this time around I made sure to add the seam allowances. Um, and yeah, I just really like it. I'll put a picture of me wearing it. I wore it with jeans. What else to mention about it? Um, it is a, it comes from sizes extra small, which is bust 31 and a half inches, waist 24 and a half inches, hips 33 and three quarter inches, up to a 4XL, which is bust 50 and three eighths inches, waist 44 and one eighth inches and hips 52 inches. So quite a good size range. And um, to get it, all you need to do is subscribe to the Maria Denmark um, email and they'll email you this free pattern. So it's a really, yeah, really nice one to have. It's great for beginners as well because it is really straightforward and comes together really quickly. Um, so yeah, that was what I wore on day four. It's a really nice comfy t-shirt and I think I should um, really have a look through my leftover bits of jersey fabric and see if I've got any more um, large enough pieces to be able to make another one of these because they're just a great one to just throw on um, under a jumper or on their own. Yeah, I think they're really nice. But that's the Maria Denmark Kirsten Kimono tee. Oh, and in terms of sizing um, for this t-shirt, um, the pattern says it's designed to be fitted in the bust and then slightly looser around the waist and hips. So I think on that basis, I sized down slightly and I went for the extra small, which is slightly smaller than my measurements because I wanted it to be a little bit more fitted in the waist and hips. And I'm pleased with how that turned out once I added the seam allowances. Um, and then I lengthened mine slightly just because I found it looked like it was going to be a bit short based on the pattern pieces. So I think I added maybe an inch and a half or something to the length and that makes it easy to tuck into things too. But that's the Maria Denmark Kirsten Kimono tee, a great free t-shirt pattern that I wore this Tuesday. So for Wednesday of this week, um, I thought I'd get out one of my slightly more summery dresses, even though it was still raining like nobody's business outside and pretty chilly. I thought I'd just layer up, add a cardigan and some tights and just try and make myself feel a little bit more summery. And so I chose to wear one of my Hinterland dresses, which is this pattern here by So Liberated. And it's one of my favourite patterns. It's just a great dress um, that's quite a relaxed day dress. You can see from the line drawings here, it's got a bottom down placket, which you can either just have on the bodice or do all the way down the skirt. It's got the gathered skirt and it's got different um, options for arms. You can either finish the arms sleeveless with a sort of bias bound finish or add short sleeves. You can even lengthen them to slightly longer sleeves and there are lots of different um, skirt lengths too. It's got pockets and optional waist ties. So yeah, it's really got everything you need from a great woven dress pattern. And it's got an amazing size range too, actually. I've got this um, paper pattern is size 0 to 24, but there's also a size um, 26 to 34 range too. So yeah, it's a really inclusive one, which is great. And um, yeah, it's one I've made a few versions of. And the version I made this wore this week was this version here, which I really love. It is a um, Hinsland dress in a cotton linen blend fabric that I got quite a while ago from Sew Me Sunshine in Gingham. And I think Gingham is um, quite in this year, so I'll definitely be wearing this one a bit this year because I've seen a lot of beautiful um, ginghams um, and a lot of online fabric shops at the moment. But yeah, I got this one last year. It's quite a large print gingham. 
I had a bit of fun with the buttons. I made these, um, added these little yellow buttons to add a pop of colour. I made the short sleeve and there's a lovely finish around the neckline with the bias binding. It comes together really nicely and I always think um, that anything with gingham with bias binding looks so pretty when it goes diamond shaped. I added the waist ties because I do like how that brings the bodice in a little bit to give more shape. And then it's got a gathered skirt just above my knee um, with the pockets too. Um, so yeah, it's a really lovely one and I'll put a picture up of me wearing that. Um, and I'm wearing it without a cardigan here but I did add a cardigan on for quite a lot of the day, just a plain black one. And for the sizing on this one, I made the smallest size, size zero, and that is for bust 31, waist 25, and hips 33.5. But I'd read a lot online about how this one is on the roomy size, and I didn't want it to be super and roomy on me. So I sized down, and that came up just fine on me. I didn't need to make any adjustments at all, actually. I might have lengthened the bodice by a small amount, but nothing else. And, um, and I think the hips measurement is much smaller than my hips, because that's 33 and a half inches, and I'm more like 36. Because it's a gathered skirt, there's plenty of room, so that's not too much trouble. But that's the um, Hinterland dress by So Liberated. It's a great day dress. The instructions are really good. It really is one of my favourite patterns. Oh, and I thought I'd mention, I'd really recommend this pattern if you are a beginner but wanting to stretch yourself a little bit. It's designed for advanced beginners and it's got a few um, nice um, techniques you'll learn here. Um, so particularly finishing um, the seams with bias binding and adding the button plackets and putting in darts. So a few nice techniques you can learn and the instructions are really well written so it'll really take you through very clearly. So I definitely recommend that one on that basis. And it's one you can make, I think, in loads of different fabrics. It's a really versatile pattern. Um, yeah, I've made this version in cotton linen. I've made it in cotton. I've also made it in a um, viscose and it, they all work really well. So um, yeah, it's a really versatile, great um, pattern for a kind of basic woven dress with a gathered skirt. But that was what I wore on Wednesday when I fancied to feel a little bit spring-like even though it was raining so much outside. Side. So that brings me to yesterday and it, it's the week has gradually gone by it's got a little bit milder and so I thought I'd get a shirt dress out that I maybe wouldn't need to wear with a cardigan on top and I decided to wear one of my more recent makes which is this one here which is a Fleetwood dress by French Navy and French Navy is a pattern company that I really like their style of I made a couple of their dresses and the Fleetwood dress is a lovely one it comes in two different styles and I'll show you the pictures so it's a shirt dress um, and it's got yeah, lovely details. This is view A, which is the one I made. So it's got a button down bodice and it's got a little yoke on the front and back and sort of some panelling here. And it's got a little cuff um, with a button detail too. And it's got a, um, I think it sits just, um, just below your natural waist and it's got a gathered skirt with a ruffle. And then view B, it has a slightly um, dropped waist to it with a similar sort of bodice, but yeah, just slightly longer and then just a single um, tear skirt. It's gathered too. But yeah, there's some lovely details, a bit of um, gathering at the back of the shirt with the yoke um, and some nice techniques to learn through making this one. It's another one with the bias binding around the neckline, which I really like. And I'll show you my version I wore. So this is my version. I've only made one of this um, dress and I made it in this lovely chambray fabric with a sort of Parisian um, theme on it. It's got the Eiffel Tower and some little hearts and a kind of Breton stripe jumper. Um, yeah, so um, this is quite a fun fabric. I think I got it from Stitch and Cream in, in um, Falmouth. Um, they're an um, online website, but I also have a shop there. And I think they set stock some yarn too and some lovely fabrics, but I'll put their website down below. Um, yes, yeah, so it's a really fun um, chambre. And um, yeah, I added these little pink buttons, which I thought matched quite well and I thought were quite cute. And you can see the bias binding finish there. And so yeah, this is my version here. And it's got the little buttons on the cuffs too. And I always feel chambray is quite a comfy fabric to wear because it's kind of uh, got the softness of cotton um, and often a little bit softer I feel than a crisp cotton. It's a little bit more, um, yeah, soft and yeah, comfy to wear. Uh, but yeah, this is my version. Um, I made the smallest size in this pattern. I'll put a picture up so you can see how the sizing looks on me. Yeah, I made the size A and that's for design for bust of 32, waist 24 hips 34. So slightly um, smaller than me on the waist and hips, but when I looked at the finished garment measurements, they came out a bit larger, so I thought that would be a good size to go for if I didn't want it too roomy around the waist and hips. I didn't think I needed to grade out. Um, and um, what else did I mention? Oh, I made a few adjustments to this one, actually. I did a toile of the bodice again on this one. I often like to do a toile of the bodice on a shirt dress, particularly when it's designed to be fairly fitted, just because there's no point in cutting into the nice fabric and ending up it being too uncomfortable to wear. And I did find I needed to make a few adjustments. So I did a forward shoulder adjustment by one centimetre because I felt the shoulder seam was falling slightly too far back. I also um, deepened the armhole a little bit because I found it was coming up really um, quite tight and snug underneath on my arm and I didn't want it to be too restrictive there. And another thing I really found was that the arms came up really quite tight, particularly around this cuff here. 
So I'll widen that by a couple of centimetres. And that's quite unusual for me to need to widen the arms because I have got quite skinny arms and I often find I need to take in the arm pieces actually. But I needed to widen those a little bit so I'm really glad I did a toile on this one because I've now got a version that is really comfy to wear. Um, the only thing to mention about this um, pattern is it, unfortunately it's not got the largest size range so it goes up to a size H which is bust 42 and a half inches, waist 36, and hips 45 and 3 eighths inches. So that is a shame that um, it doesn't have a broader size range. But um, it is a pattern with some lovely details and I do enjoy wearing it. Um, the ruffle I think is a bit of fun. And um, so that's the Fleetwood dress up by French Navy All. And I also forgot to mention I added some pockets on this one, some inseam pockets, because I thought they'd be quite practical. And they, I always think pockets is quite a nice thing to have on a shirt dress in a cotton. I'm not always such a fan of pockets on a drapier fabric where I feel if you add something in the pocket it can sort of pull it down too much but I feel like a cotton and a chambray can um yeah take a, a mobile phone and um, some keys in a pocket so I do try and add them on. So that's the um, Fleetwood dress by French Navy it's a really lovely um pattern and a, a really nice one to sew up to the instructions are great and um yeah I really enjoyed sewing that one. So that brings me to today which is Friday and it's another overcast day here. We haven't had any rain so far, which is nice. And there's even been a few glimpses of sunshine. So I'm hoping for more of that for the rest of today and for the weekend. Um, it's actually um, my son's birthday this month. And this weekend, now that we're allowed to have slightly larger gatherings here, we're hoping to have a little gathering at the park for him tomorrow to celebrate his birthday, share a little bit of cake and have a bit of a run around. So please keep your fingers crossed for tomorrow. I've been keeping my eye on the forecast and yeah, keeping my fingers tightly crossed. But there's still a bit of a chill in the air today, so I've got on um, a pinafore and top. And my top is a um, one of my favourite patterns, it's the trusty Freya top from Tilly and the Buttons stretch book. And um, yeah, it's one I've made a few of, and I'll show you the line drawings here. You can make a top or a dress version of this one. Um, it's got a little mock neckline and it's quite a fitted um, design, and then you can make the dress with a sort of A-line skirt. So yeah, it's got quite a lot of negative ease built in. So I make the size two, like with the Agnes top, my standard Tilly size, and it's quite fitted. And I think I lengthen the arms and the body just slightly. But it's got a little mock neckline. And this one I made this year in this plain um, navy cotton jersey, just because I find it to be such a great layering piece. So I wanted a couple of plain ones just to pop underneath dresses that have prints on and that sort of thing. But I have also got a couple of frayers that are a bit more um, bold and bright that are with prints that I would wear with jeans as kind of more of a feature top. But I love that pattern, it's a great one, and the stretch book's a great book as well if you're fairly new to sewing with jersey fabrics. It's got some really nice projects in there to get you feeling more comfortable with, with sewing with stretch fabrics. So that's my top, which is a Tilly and the Buttons make, um, a pattern company I've already worn this week. But this pinafore is by a pattern company I haven't worn this week or even this month yet, and it's um, by Jennifer Lauren Handmade. And um, Jennifer Lauren is a pattern company I've only made a couple of patterns by. I've made um, this pinafore. And also the juniper cardigan, which is a lovely little cardigan. It's got a lovely cropped version with a few really nice details. And I do find that Jennifer Lauren patterns do have some lovely details. And the pinafore I'm wearing today is this one. It's the Pippi pinafore. And yep, here are the line drawings. It's a really nice little pinafore. It's got um, cross back straps and it's quite a fitted pinafore. So it really pulls in around your waist. It's got darts on the bib, also darts at the back to pull the back in. And then some pleats at the front to give shape to. And it's got these lovely um, deep pockets as well. And then because it is quite a fitted pinafore, it's got buttons down the side here, so you can get in and out of it. So this is my version here. And I made it quite a while ago now, actually. And I made it in this um, lovely um, corduroy, which is by Robert Kaufman, which I got from Guthrie Garney. And I don't think they have it in stock anymore, but I'll check on the website and I'll include the link to the website anyway. It's a really nice um, quality um, corduroy. I always find Robert Kaufman fabrics to be lovely quality generally. And I'll show you a few the details. It's got little buttons on the straps here. It's got little, um, yeah, there's sort of darts here on the, um, the, the bib. The little pleats here. And it's got these lovely big pockets. And then it's got an opening at the side here with these buttons, which I think is really nice. And as you can see, it's pulled in. It's quite fitted on the waist. Um, and it's a really nice one to sew. And also the pockets and the bib are lined. And I used um, some Liberty fabric for my lining, um, which I had a left over from making the blouse by the Avid Seamstress I made in this fabric. So it's really nice to have a pop of that colour on the bib and the pockets. I think I always had just enough fabric to make a face mask too, so I could go all out matchy um, with a little um, Liberty face mask too, if I wanted, because I had just enough fabric left for that one. It's a lovely pattern. Um, it's not got the biggest size range. It goes from zero to size 24, I believe. 
Jennifer Lauren does have a couple of patterns available in her curve range, which goes up to a size um, 30, I think, definitely a larger size. But the Pippi Pinafore isn't one of those yet. Um, but what it does have, which I think is quite nice, is it does have different bust size options built into this pattern. So you can make it in a, bu in a bust size A, B, C or D. So that's quite good because it is, it is quite fitted around the bib, so it's nice to know that it would be fitted around the bust too. So I made mine in a size 8, um, I think, which is um, designed for, I made it in a B cup size 8. So the B cup gives you a 32 inch size 8 and waist 26, hips 37. So that's quite um, good for my measurements. And um, Jennifer Lawrence pattern is always really detailed. So I think they take you through every step with lots of information, which I think is great if you're fairly new to um, doing things like um, adding the facings to the waistband on here and that sort of, and adding the darts. So yeah, it takes you through in a lot of detail. So it's a good pattern company for that. Um, yeah, it's just a nice little pinafore. The twist, I'll put a picture up so you can see me wearing it. So that's the Pippi Pinafore by Jennifer Lauren Handmade. It's a really lovely pinafore with some really pretty details. And um, in terms of fabric requirements, this one, I thought I might mention. The pattern for my size um, says it needs 1.75 metres of fabric if it's 150 centimetres wide. So I bought that, but I actually found I used quite a lot less. I think because quite a lot of the pattern pieces are quite small, you can have a real play with them where they're positioned and actually squeeze it out of a smaller amount of fabric. So if you're interested in this pattern, you might be able to get away with slightly less fabric than the pattern suggests. But yeah, that's the Pippi Pinafore and my last day of this week in Me Maids May. So I've really enjoyed sharing with you what I've been wearing this week um, for my handmade wardrobe. And I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about the different um, things I've been wearing. I'm disappointed there hasn't been a bit more summery weather, so I can't get some more of my summery dresses out. But, you know, there's still next week. I'm keeping my fingers crossed on the weather. But thank you so much for joining me and sharing in my latest week of my handmade wardrobe. I hopefully be back again next week to share next week's wardrobe with you. And then after that, I'll move on to some different types of vlogs. Um, but yeah, if you've enjoyed this vlog, I'd love it if you give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, but you would be interested in hearing more about my sewing plans, my sewing makes, and me talking about different types of fabrics and all things sewing related, I would love it if you would subscribe to my um, channel and also press the bell icon so you're notified of my future vlogs. But thank you so much for joining me today for another week of my handmade wardrobe. I'm really hoping there's a little bit more sunshine with you than we have here. And if you do have some sunshine with you, then please do send some our way. We could really do with some. So thanks again for watching and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Bye.